Well, it's December, the holiday season. It's time to get out there, capitalise on them sweet, sweet Christmas deals, and most importantly, break the bank for our friends and family. But let's not stay pessimistic. We all enjoy the holidays, we all enjoy consuming. And what better thing to consume than movies? I agree, Shane. Movies are indeed a great source of consumption. But I digress. Originally, I was going to talk about five of the best Xmas movies of all time. I need to stop doing that. The Goats of Christmas, you could say. However, after compiling my list, I noticed something. A commonality between two of the entries I had selected. You see, there is room for argument and discussion on whether Die Hard and The Nightmare Before Christmas are actually Christmas movies. Both films were not released in December, with Die Hard being released in July 1988 and The Nightmare Before Christmas being released in October 1993. But they both inarguably feature standout Christmas iconography and symbolism. The two films also happen to take place during the holiday season. As someone who has watched both of these critically acclaimed masterpieces over and over a dozen times, Christmas inevitably comes to mind. It's impossible to ignore because it's so blunt and in your face. Christmas plays a huge part in the plot and story of both movies, but does that make them specifically Christmas movies? Today I aim to look back at both of these masterpieces and answer that very question. But before I do that, I feel it's necessary to explore how we define a Christmas film. Now, the problem with finding a definition for a Christmas film is that there really isn't one, or at least there isn't a consistent one. Some people argue that a Christmas movie must feature traditional Christmas characters in prominent roles like Santa or Rudolph or the Elf or something like that. Others say that it must include themes and messages that relate to the idea of Christmas, such as family or togetherness. Even in those definitions, errors present themselves. If every movie about family and togetherness was a Christmas movie, then I guess they need to rename Fast and Furious to Faith and Festivity. If it needs to feature prominent Christmas characters, does that make Home Alone and, you know, It's a Wonderful Life and not Christmas films? What I'm trying to say is that there's no basic definition that everyone's going to agree upon, like, say, horror or sci-fi. Christmas isn't a well-defined genre in media as a whole, which is why there's always a debate on what makes something a Christmas thing. So when it comes to determining whether The Nightmare Before Christmas and Die Hard are in fact Christmas movies, I can only default to opinion. And in my opinion, both of them aren't Christmas movies. Let me explain, starting with Die Hard. Everyone has seen and enjoys Die Hard. It's a classic, it's the quintessential action film, and if you haven't seen it, Bro, what the fuck are you doing, man? I'll give a brief, and I mean brief, synopsis of this flick. Essentially, the film stars Bruce Willis as John McClane, an off-duty detective from New York who travels to Los Angeles to the Nakatomi Plaza in hopes of reconnecting with his estranged wife, Holly. During his stay, the tower gets taken over by a group of terrorists led by Hans Gruber, a German leading the group who wants to steal $640 million from the vault inside the tower. Everyone inside gets taken hostage, but John manages to get away in the nick of time. The rest of the film follows John going through the tower, shooting at terrorists, going about his merry way while on the side informing the police of the situation. Eventually he comes face to face with Hans, defeats the bad guy, gets the girl and they live happily ever after. Until they decided they wanted to make more money. It's your typical male badass fantasy, but it's a damn good one and it practically wrote the book on action films for a long time. Regardless of your opinion on the film concerning Christmas, the fact is that everyone going to see it is going to see it because it's a solid action film, not because it's winter and, you know, there's Christmas trees about and presents. They're seeing it because they want to see Bruce Willis with his shirt off shooting people. While Christmas is the backdrop of the film, I feel like any other holiday would have worked just as well. Or even no holidays at all. The winter season doesn't serve a huge purpose in this film. But there is one scene that benefits from this setting, and that's the ending. Don McLean has just spent all day shooting bad guys, probably feels tired, injured, and most likely feels like utter shit. Once John leaves the building though, we can see that it's raining down paper. In other words, snowing, quote unquote. After a remaining terrorist tries to finish off John before being swiftly dealt with, the song Let It Snow starts playing, which can I say, is just thematically brilliant. Snow is commonly used in other movies as well. For example, it can be used to signify that it's Christmas, or a start of a new beginning or outlook on life. In Die Hard's case, the snow represents John's rekindled relationship with Holly as they drive off and the movie ends, implying that their new reconciled love is only the beginning. Spoiler alert, it doesn't go well, my man gets divorced again. The ending could be used as an argument in favour of it being a Christmas movie, but 
I don't feel like that's enough evidence to suggest so. I mean, snow doesn't mean Christmas, otherwise it would be happy holidays all year round in Russia and the, uh, Antarctic. Those are the only two places where it snows that I can think of. Okay, so before I continue, I'd just like to say that I'm recording this half of the video on another day, and unfortunately I've developed a cold, so... If I sound fucked up, it's because I actually am fucked up. And not the good kind. Anyways, let's talk about The Nightmare Before Christmas. One of my personal favourite animated movies of all time, if I'm honest. You know, some people say that Die Hard is a product of its time, or copaganda, but The Nightmare Before Christmas is truly a timeless classic. An amazing film that, if you haven't seen it, please go fix that. Now. I'll wait. Okay, I'm done waiting. The Nightmare Before Christmas tells the story of one Jack Skellington, a resident of Halloween Town whom everyone looked up to for being a great leader and encapsulating the spirit of Halloween. Unfortunately, Jack has grown tired of the same old stale annual routine each year and desires to experience something new. He ends up aimlessly wandering through the forest, eventually happening upon six trees, each representing their own holiday. One of the tree doors leads him to Christmas Town, a place so different from what he's used to that he feels excited and brimming with ambition to learn and study this holiday. Eventually, after all that studying, he decides that he can do way better than what's currently going on, and decides to take over Christmas this year instead of doing Halloween again. He even kidnaps Santa so that he can be the one to deliver presents. You know, say what you want, but my man's dedicated. Of course, this ends up going horribly wrong, as instead of bringing joy to the people, he brings panic and fear and terror. To the point where he ends up being shot down by the freaking military of all things. I mean, Jesus, I guess the military budget is justified now. Thankfully, Jack survives the attack and reminisces on how badly he screwed up. Although, he actually realises that he enjoyed spreading mass fear and panic. That realisation ends up reinvigorating his creativity and passion for Halloween once again. But before celebrating, he's got to fix his screw-ups. He goes back to Halloween Town, discovering that Santa has actually been taken hostage by Oogie Boogie, a giant sack filled with bugs who is too brutal and sadistic even for Halloween standards. Jack defeats him, confesses his love for Sally, um, whoops, forgot to mention that he had a love interest, my bad. And that's the film. So how exactly can I argue that this isn't a Christmas movie? I mean, it's in the name. Hell, Santa is literally in it. Well, it might be a predictable answer, but to be honest, it's just because it's more of a Halloween film. Not in a spooky Michael Myers is coming to stab you through the closet kind of way, but more celebrating the tradition of Halloween. Even during the time where Jack Skellington becomes Sandy Claus, as he calls it, he ends up spreading terror and panic, which he remembers that doing so is what he loves, it's what he's passionate about. Christmas is featured in this movie to break the established equilibrium of Halloween, which is then renewed after Jack fixes his mistakes. Overall, it's a movie about Halloween and Jack's reinvigoration of a formula he thought was stale. Look, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if they're Christmas movies or not. I've watched both movies countless times over, not giving a damn about what month I'm watching them in. As a matter of fact, that goes for every quote-unquote Christmas movie, or movie that's about a certain holiday in general. Actually, when it comes to tradition, I say fuck it. We should all start eating ice cream in the winter, drinking hot chocolate in the summer, and stop caring when the right time is to watch, eat, play, or do something is. If these movies were really accurate to the holidays, we'd be seeing John McClane and Jack Skellington in Walmart and Tesco, sweating their heads off looking at their last minute Christmas shopping lists. But with that aside, it's an interesting discussion nonetheless. So what do you guys think? Was I wrong? Are these movies actually Christmas movies? Or is it dumb to even care about tradition in the first place? Leave your thoughts in the comments. Anyways, that concludes this video. Like if you liked, dislike if you disliked, and I am out of here. I'll see you guys next time. And I gotta take care of this fucking Cold, man. Ooh.